Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I wanted to talk about what's one of my favorite messaging apps. I started using it around 2018. It's Signal. This is from BBC News. It says Signal would walk away from the UK if the online safety bill undermined encryption or required that it undermined encryption so that they could protect children or whatever else they're talking about with these types of bills. I know that there's this stigma among Android users and people that have a green text messaging box on your phone. You know what I have? I have a stigma if you message me using something other than Signal. I'm so cool that I require you to install Signal if you want to text message me. I am not communicating with you with iMessage or Greenbubble SMS. Well, that. But in all seriousness, this is why I really enjoy using Signal. Before I go over this, I just figure I should get any sort of biases or conflicts of interest out of the way. At this point in time, I am employed by one of the co-founders and co-investors in WhatsApp, who was good friends with Brian Acton, who went on to start the Signal Foundation, which is why we have Signal to begin with. So that is an obvious conflict of interest. However, to be clear, I was using Signal for several years before I met him or knew any of these people. So this, I just I'm gonna read this and you let me know what you think. It says the encrypted messaging app Signal has said it would stop providing service in the UK if a new law undermined encryption. If forced to weaken the privacy of its messaging system under the online safety bill, the organization would absolutely 100% walk, Signal president Meredith Whitaker told the BBC. Good job, Meredith Whitaker. That's exactly the right stance to take. It is not to kowtow the line. It is not to do what Aaron said they did with Yahoo Pool back in the 90s, where, you know, if somebody started talking about uh, Tiananmen Square in China while they're playing Yahoo Pool, maybe that game, you know, maybe that, that wouldn't be allowed. It's not to do what Google does, which is restrict some of the search elements if you're in a country where they may not have the idea of freedom of speech that we have in America. It's just to walk. Like, no, we have principles, we are sticking to those principles, and we are not going to sell out our users for your government. Good job. The government said its proposal was not a ban on end-to-end -end encryption. The bill, introduced by Boris Johnson, is currently going through Parliament. Critics say companies could be required by Ofcom to scan messages on encrypted apps for child sexual abuse material or terrorism under the new law. This has worried firms whose business is enabling private secure communication. Element, a UK company whose customers include the Ministry of Defense, told the BBC the plan would cost the clients. Previously, WhatsApp has told the BBC it would refuse to lower security for any government, which again, in my opinion, is the right stance to take. Do not lower your security. Do not sell out your users because one country has stupid legislators. It says magical thinking. The government and prominent child protection charities have long argued that encryption hinders efforts to combat child online abuse, which they say is a growing problem. It is important that technology companies make every effort to ensure that their platforms do not become a breeding ground for pedophiles, the Home Office said in a statement. It added the online safety bill does not represent a ban on end to end encryption, but makes clear that technological changes should not be implemented in a way that diminishes is public safety, especially the safety of children online. These are weasel words. These are 100% weasel words because if you have a fully encrypted manner of messaging, that will protect everybody. It will protect the sick fucks and it will also protect people that are having normal private communications that just want to be able to go about their daily lives without being spied on by their manufacturer, their telecommunications company, or their government, which is totally fine. We do not give up the freedom of the 99.9% .9 of normal people because 0.1% of the population are sick, twisted fucks. That's not how this works. We do not give up freedom for everybody because a few people suck. It's not a choice between privacy or child safety. We can and we must have both. Child protection charity, the NSPCC, said in reaction to Signal's announcement, tech companies should be required to disrupt the abuse that is occurring at record levels on their platforms, including in private messaging and end-to-end -end encrypted environments. And here is the point at which I genuinely love the response that Meredith made. This is why Meredith Whitaker is awesome, and I hope she continues to be the president of signal and i think that she kicks ass there's no one who doesn't want to protect children some of the stories that are invoked are harrowing when asked how she would respond to arguments that encryption protects abusers miss whitaker said she believed most abuse took place in the family and in the community where she argued the focus of efforts to stop it should be damn straight so if you want there to be less child abuse how about instead of going over the, what i get 99 of the users are using for legal private communications how about instead of trying to ruin the entire 
fucking internet that I reject that premise entirely and say that if you cared about this type of thing, if you cared about pedophile rings and all this other stuff, that you would look at what is going on in your own community, that you would look at the family dysfunction and everything else that makes this possible. Meredith pointed to a paper by Professor Ross Anderson, which argued for better funding of services of working in child protection and warned that the idea that complex social problems are amenable to cheap technical solutions is the siren song of the software salesman. It's similar to the defense that I think that people should start making when it comes to the automotive manufacturers saying that mechanics want to steal the data from your car so they could advertise to you, this, that, and the other, instead of saying, no, we, that's not what we want to do. No, we're really good mechanics. We're not going to do anything like that. Instead of cowering away and accepting their premise, how about you say, why is my car collecting data on me to begin with? And how about you give me the option to stop it? See, what she did is she went on the offensive. She did not accept the premise of assholes, which is why she is an incredibly effective communicator and an incredibly effective president of Signal, an application that is going to have many, many hit pieces written on it, like this piece of garbage that came out in the New York Times two months ago. That's why I'm happy that places like the Signal Foundation have such effective communicators. But back to the point that I left off at in the article. The digital rights campaigners, the open rights group, said it highlighted how the bill threatened to undermine our right to communicate securely and privately. Ms. Whitaker told the BBC it is magical thinking to believe that we have privacy, but only for the good guys. True. She added, encryption is either protecting everyone or it is broken for everyone. True. She said the online safety bill embodied a variant of this magical thinking. Signal has over 100 million app downloads in the Google Store alone. It uses end-to-end -end encryption, a system where the messages are so scrambled that even the company operating the service cannot read them, which is how it should be. Operated by a Californian-based not-for-profit organization, the app's users include journalists, activists, and politicians. WhatsApp also uses end-to-end -end encryption, as does Apple's iMessage system and optionally Facebook and Telegram. Apple had proposed a system where messages sent from phones and other devices would be scanned for CSAM before being encrypted, but abandoned the plans following a backlash. One of the few good things Apple has done here called client-side scanning. Some have said this approach that tech firms may end up having to use, but critics argue it effectively undermines the point of encryption. It would, in effect, turn everyone's phone into a mass surveillance device that phones home to tech corporations and governments and private entities, Ms. Whitaker said. True. Privacy promises. Ms. Whitaker said that backdoors to enable the scanning of private messages would be exploited by malignant state actors and create a way for criminals to access the system. True. Asked if the online safety bill could jeopardize their ability to offer a service in the UK, she told the BBC, it could, and we would absolutely 100% walk rather than ever undermine the trust that people place in us to provide a truly private means of communication. We have never weakened our privacy promises, and we never would. Right answer. Ding, 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 ding. This is why when people ask, how do I communicate with you? And I say, you install Signal. I am proud that that is the app that I am using for most of my communications. Matthew Hodgson, chief executive of Element, a British communications company, said the threat of mandating scanning alone would cost him clients. He argued that customers would assume any secure communications product that came out of the UK would necessarily have to have backdoors in order to allow for illegal content to be scanned. It could also result in a very surreal situation where a government bill might undermine security guarantees given to customers at the MOD and other sensitive areas of the government, he added. He also said that the firm might have to cease offering some services. This is an organization that I think actually uh, walks the talk and gives a crap about privacy and again is why I'm happy that I use this for my communications. If the UK passes this bill and Signal says I would support them 100% and I think people in the UK should let their politicians know that they are trying to undermine the foundation of what allows private communications to try and catch 0.00001% of the population that they're probably not even going to catch at the expense of privacy for everybody. In the future, somebody, some bad state actor, again, I, I just want you to imagine this, like in your heart of hearts, if you're somebody who was trying to run a business in 2020 in California, somebody looking up how to get an abortion in Texas in 2023, do you really want there to be a backdoor built to an encrypted messaging application? No. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.